hello. Give me a second. Oh. Oh, there we go. Good. All right. Sorry. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Um, today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be learning one point perspective and I know that perspective is like the bane of a lot of people's existence. Um, so I am here to make it less annoying because um, I quite like perspective actually. I, I hate it. Okay, I don't love perspective. I don't hate it though. I like it when I'm working digitally but I dislike it if I'm working traditionally. <laughs> I think that's the difference. Um, but yes, so if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings because we are not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone all right let's see who's in but hello to everyone who's popping in and it's good friday um so there's not a crazy amount i don't think i'm, I'm not expecting a crazy amount of people today that's all good but let's get going on one point perspective because it can be a bit tricky. Um, and if you're working, if you're following along and you are going to be working traditionally, then make sure that you have a ruler handy because you're gonna need it. But what is perspective? So if you don't know, perspective is, you know, when you have perspective, there's a few key things that you want to know. So let me create a box real quick. Oh, I should use the pen tool. Let me create a box real quick so you can see what I'm thinking of. It doesn't have to be a perfect box. I'm just creating something. So I'm going to teach you a bit of terminology because if you've never done perspective before, then it might be a little bit tricky. So with this first thing that I'm going to draw across here, I'm going to color code everything. So this is your horizon line. Your horizon line, you know, is that thing, if you've ever seen it, um, if you've ever looked out onto the, out on a beach or if you've seen something like that, right, um, where the sky meets the water, that's your horizon line, right? What divides it? That's your horizon line, right? So it's the horizon. <laughs> um, the next thing that we want to know the terminology for, right? So if I draw a little tick here, right, that's called your vanishing point. Right? So you can have a ton of vanishing points. We're only going to be talking about one today, right? Because it's one point perspective. So there's one point that everything is going to go towards. Right? So some people draw their vanishing points as dots. And can you do that? Sure. But it makes your life a little bit easier if you draw it as a tick. Hi, hi. Hello, Alyssa. Welcome in. And hello to Anna. Welcome in as well. See, so yes, it's your horizon line, your vanishing point. Your vanishing point you can draw as a tick instead of a little dot. I'll write that down too. Draw as a little line. Easier to find point. So when you have a little dash instead of a dot, Right, what you're doing is you're creating a little crosshair for yourself, right? So it's a little bit easier to find that center point. With a dot, it can be a little bit trickier, right? You can get a little bit off-centered sometimes. So this makes it a little more precise. Right, so you have your horizon line, your vanishing point, which you can draw as a little line, which is easier, which makes it easier to find the point. And if you have lines coming from your vanishing point. So these lines are called your perspective lines. 
perspective guidelines. Right, your perspective guidelines are what make it so it's easier to go back towards, you know, go towards that vanishing point, right? Because when we are drawing your perspective, when in perspective, ah, my terrible handwriting is showing through here. <laughs> So I'm drawing in perspective, when in perspective, all things must recede towards the vanishing point. Right, whether there's one vanishing point or two vanishing points, you know, or three, right, we're going to get up to three with all of these live streams. Um, but when in perspective, all things that recede towards a vanishing point must, you know, go towards it, right? Um, I'll, of course, I'll teach you how to do all these, right? But if we stay, we can't. I need to organize my thoughts for a second. <laughs> um, so you need to make sure that every angle is going back towards that vanishing point, right? Because then it might look a little bit off or a little bit wonky, right? So we want to make sure that we're constantly doing that. And if you're not working digitally, then working with a ruler is your best bet. Right? So let's talk about a few shapes and how to draw them in perspective. Just fix something over here for a moment. Because some things are easier to draw in perspective than others, right? Especially if you, the very common thing that people like to draw in perspective is boxes, right? So let's draw some boxes. I'm also going to make this a little bit wider. Let's make this, yeah. So that's all the terminology that you need. There's not too much nuance to it. spell that right. B-O-X. There we go. There we are. So when we are figuring out our perspective lines, right? For anything that you're drawing, right? You want to plant down your horizon line and your vanishing point first, right? So some people, usually with um, any kind of design or whatever, you don't want your horizon line directly in the middle. You don't want your vanishing point directly in the middle, right? Can you have it this way? Yes, right? If you have your vanishing point directly in the middle and you have your horizon line directly in the middle, you can do that, but it's a little bit basic and kind of boring and overdone, right? So let's not do that. We'll talk about shot types in a little bit too, because those are essential. Whoops. Hello? Oh, I see. I'm going to make my vanishing points and horizon lines different colors. So I'm going to have them all skewed that way, right? Hey, yo, welcome in, Philly. I'm going to call you Phil, because it's kind of what it is. Right, so I'm going to have my horizon line really low this time with my vanishing point pretty low as well, or off to the right. Right, so I'll do this one pretty low and I'll do the next one pretty tall so we can, I can show you the difference. Right, but when we're drawing boxes in one point perspective, what you first most likely want to do is figure out one of the sides. So if I'm going to make a rectangle, just for quick, quickness sake, I'm going to draw one side of that rectangle there. Right, just use the shape tool. And hello, Faye, welcome in, our lovely creative director. So you notice how the height and the width of this one face are completely horizontal and ver vertical, right? There's no difference. There's no, you know, perspective added onto that. But when we start to draw the other sides, that's when we start to add on perspective, right? So taking each corner of 
this first rectangle, we're going to bring it back towards our vanishing point. Now I'm holding shift, all right? I'm tapping once on the corner, holding shift, and then bringing it back. So now we have a few more lines in perspective. So all of these sides are going back towards this vanishing point. You notice how I said everything must recede back towards the vanishing point? We need to make sure that all of these sides are going back towards it. And that's when I can draw my next sides back in that are also completely horizontal and vertical. So if I use a darker color, Now we have that box in perspective, right? I'm going to leave these um, perspective lines in just so you know how it works, right? And let's draw another shape, right? Let's do something like, well, this is only going to be boxes. This is going to be like rectangular prisms and everything like that. So let's do a wider one. Let's do a wider one that's directly above the vanishing point, right? So you notice how I had three different lines that go back towards the vanishing point this time. This time, I'm only going to have two sides that go back towards it, right? Because these sides won't be visible. Unless if the box is completely clear, these sides won't be visible. So all I have is the bottom of this box. Again, draw sideways. Right, and now we got two boxes in perspective. Right, you notice how it's always one face that is perfectly horizontal or vertical. Right, it's just a perfect rectangle or square or whatever, and the other sides go back towards it. I have a way of explaining it, but everyone I've taught has said it's been really, really confusing. I might say it anyway. Um, <laughs> oops. Let's make one more that's a little more square like, right? Just so I can show you once more. And I take the rest of the corners and bring them back to that vanishing point one more time. So these are all the very, very basic shapes, and that's what I'm starting with. Because obviously you're probably not going to draw a bunch of floating boxes, right? It's going to be more, you know other shapes or objects or whatever in perspective, but you need to know your shapes before you do anything more complex. Because if you jump into stuff that's too complex to begin with, then it can get a little bit confusing. So with boxes, let me write down the process down here. Start with a regular. Square rectangle. Bring the corners back to VP. Vanishing point can also be VP. I'll, I'll write that down here. Right, so you can also call your vanishing point your VP. Right? Just makes it a little bit easier. So that was what we got for boxes. Right, let's move on to... Pyramids. Right, because it's a slightly different... Slightly different process. The nice thing about pyramids is that it still uses very, very hard edges. We'll get into circles later because circles are kind of tricky. But again, this time I'm going to bring my horizon horizon line up top. Right, so this time it's going to be kind of up high. My vanishing point is going to be off to the side over here. I should have done that a different color. Let me do that in a different color. Once 
when working in perspective, usually color coding everything helps a lot. So color code as much as you can. So when it comes to a pyramid, the thing with boxes was that we had the ability, you know, to just draw a face and then add the rest of the sides later, right? So it wasn't too, too tricky. This time, because a pyramid usually, you know, the square side is on the bottom, right? We're going to have to draw the square in perspective first, right? So let's say, so first we want to start by bringing our vanishing points outwards. Right, so let's say that I did that, connect them here. And I make my square, quote unquote. What I want to do next is I want to find the middle point, right? So what I'm going to do is take each corner that's across from one another and create an X. So now there's an X in the middle of this square. And then I take that intersecting point and bring it straight upwards. And now I can connect all the extra sides to the corners, back down to the corners. I'm going to do that again as well. I'm going to do another three, another two, just like I did with the boxes, right? And if I just draw in the rest of my sides, now you can see that pyramid, right? You needed to make sure that square was in perspective first though, in order for it to work. So let's draw another pyramid. I'll make this one a little bit closer. A bit close to the horizon line. All right, so it's just a smidge more skewed. And again, we're gonna take the corners of that square, whatever four-sided polygon quadrilateral that you drew, right? And connect them. Take that connecting middle point, bring it upwards as tall as you want, and then take each corner and connect it back to that top point that we've made. So that way you have your pyramid in perspective. And I'll do it one more time over here. All right, just repeating myself a few times just so you can see what's happening. All right, so you take two lines that are coming from your vanishing point, connect them straight across, make another line farther back that's parallel to this first line. Then you take your corners connect them and draw one line going straight upwards from that intersection in the middle because that's going to be the center of whatever polygon you've drawn. And then from that top point you're going to bring it back down to the corners that will be visible. Let me fix this one. Now you can kind of see all the different types of pyramids. Now, if the pyramid was above this line, right, I'd be able to see the bottom. You notice that when my vanishing point, hi, hello, Blood Ryu, welcome back. So you notice that when my horizon line is higher up, right, it looks like we're looking down on these pyramids, right? But you notice when my horizon line is lower down, it looks like we're looking up at these boxes. Right, so let's write that down. Thanks. So with the horizon line. Just move this. Oh, these are on a different layer. Whoops, is. Let's just merge these two then. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so with your horizon line, right? When it's higher, 
let me actually just go. But it's higher, makes everything look small. Bird's eye view. These come especially important when we get to three point perspective, but obviously we're going to stick with one point for today. So when the horizon line is higher, it makes everything look small and it makes everything in a bird's eye view. And when it's lower, it makes everything look large. Bugs eye view. Right, so when your horizon line is higher up, it makes everything look small, so it becomes a bird's eye view. But when your horizon line is lower, it makes everything look large, so it looks like you're with a bug's eye view, right? It looks like you're looking up, up onto whatever is there. Oh, so this is still in the boxes layer. Whoopsies. Let's make this on a new layer. Okay, so this next one is where it starts to get pretty tricky, right? If, if this wasn't already tricky enough. <laughs> um, oh, let me write down the process for pyramids too. Start with quadrilateral. In perspective. Connect. That's what that is adjacent, right? No, so this is just, um, it's not adjacent, it's the opposite. <laughs> Connect opposite. Opposite or cross? Connect corners. From E. Draw a line up. From intersection. Put more lines down to corners. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at written explanations. <laughs> I'm better at a, just drawing. Better at showing than telling. Hello, Gold Peak of 500. Welcome in. More perspective today. Let's see if this says, let's make this taller. Let's make this even taller because we are going to need it. So, this is where it starts to get pretty tricky. We're gonna do circles in perspective. And if you can do circles and you can do cylinders and you can do spheres and you can do cones, right? So if you could do a circle, you could do all those other three, but the circle is the one that can be kind of tricky because not too many people understand it. So. Give me a 
fix this. So it's not so in the way. Hello, Embazel. Welcome in. I'm just organizing for a second, so it makes it easier to draw this next part. Yes, the circles are the harder one. And if you're just joining, we have already done boxes and we have done pyramids, so we've gotten the easier ones out of the way. Um, but now we're getting onto circles, and circles are what is more challenging. Circles just have a lot of extra steps. I think that's all I'd describe it as. So this one I'm going to do directly in the middle because I want to show from different angles. This one. So similar to how we started with the pyramids, right? we want to start with the square in perspective. And it has to be a square. And that's why it's kind of tricky because drawing squares in perspective can be a little bit hard. This is looking a little bit too pointy. So we want to make sure that it's perfectly across, right? So you have to adjust for perspective when you're drawing a square. All right, so I'm going to do a few of these squares from different angles as well. Just before I actually draw any of the circles. So you have to draw these squares in perspective first. Once you have those, I'll take this one first down here. Just like with the pyramids, you're going to connect all of these corners, right? But this time, you're also going to come from the vanishing point and draw a line going through the middle of that, right? So it's almost like you're creating an asterisk. And one more parallel to these two lines going across, right? So it's, oops. So it's like you're creating a star almost. Oh, I can't redo. Oh, yes, I can. I'm going to have to change that shortcut. Thought I already did. Apparently I didn't. Right? So now you've created almost this asterisk shape, right? When you have this, all the diagonal lines you're going to want to cut into thirds, right? But again, account for perspective when you're drawing these thirds. Jesse, this method seems kind of convoluted. I thought so too, but it actually works. <laughs> I was taught this by my pre-production college professor, by the way. So this is how he taught us how to do it. Right? So with your diagonal lines, you want to cut them into thirds. And then from there, you're going to draw a circle that touches the edges of the plus sign, but hits this outer third of the diagonal lines. So let me just do it. It's a little bit easier to know what I'm doing, or know what I'm talking about. Right? So if I start from this one... Notice how I'm hitting the edges. Of course, it doesn't have to perfectly hit the third. But it should be touching all of the... plus sign ones. Right? So just turn up my correction real high. So it's kind of a shaky circle, but you kind of see what I'm doing, right? And now you have that circle in perspective. 
right? So I did four for a reason because this one's kind of hard to follow. So again, connect to the corners. Hang on. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Sneeze. Um. So you want to connect the corners, right? Bring one more line coming from the vanishing point and hitting that intersection in the middle. And then one more, this time a vertical line that is parallel with these two. So you create almost this star, this asterisk, right? So you'll have this plus sign in the middle, right? And you'll have an X. Bless you. Thank you. And with these diagonal, with the X lines, we want to cut these into thirds. And of course, we want to account for perspective. And what that means is that we don't want to make them into perfect thirds every single time. We want to make sure that it is following the perspective that we have given ourselves. Right, and they can be approximate thirds. They don't have to be exact, exact. And when we cut into thirds, we want to get the edge of all the plus sign ones, but we want to hit the thirds that we've drawn for ourselves. Of course, you don't have to use this every single time, but it'll get easier It'll get a lot easier <laughs> as you do it over and over and over, right? I've memorized this because I've done it over and over and over, but as time has gone on, I don't really need to use this method anymore. I still use the box one, but I can approximate circles nowadays. Sometimes they're also ovals and they're not exactly perfect circles. And I'm feathering because I cannot be bothered to make perfect lines right now. I don't want to spend forever on this. Right? All right, let me do one more circle. I don't think I needed three. Um, this time without instruction. Right, connect all the lines, parallel, thirds. The thirds don't have to be perfect, perfect, but you do want to connect the edges of the square. It's more likely than not, your thirds aren't going to be perfect anyway. Right, so with your circles, oh, let me turn on my correction, it's still up. Circles, you wanna create a square in perspective. Connect, connect corners across, what plus sign? In perspective. Cut diagonal lines. And 
into thirds. Natural circle. Edges. Hit the ends. Plus sign. And a third. Two thirds of the diagonal. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm not great with written instruction <laughs> as much as I am with drawn instruction. Um, but with that, that is halfway through. Um, we are a little bit over um, half an hour through this whole thing. So this is a, you know, our plugging point. So if you didn't know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. So if you would like to check out all the classes that we have to offer, I am one of the teachers. We also have, I believe, Faye, who might still be in chat, um, and Alyssa, who is behind the Wing Canvas channel right now. Um, and we are all teachers at Wing Canvas. So if you'd like to check out our classes, be sure to see our website in the links in the description. Um, and the file that you see before you will be available to download on our Discord as a JPEG. So if you would like to take it afterwards, it's yours keep it you can download it do whatever you'd like with it just don't repost it um but it is all yours to take and reference later but if you would like my working files then you are going to have to sign up to our patreon where you can get access to all of my working files and other perks such as critiques and behind the behind the scenes sneak peeks from our um studio that you can get ahead on but that being said let's move on so I want to give myself as much time as possible to do this last bit, um, right? Because it's going to be going to take a while. Um, because in one point perspective, you know, we have all these shapes, but um, you know, most of the time we're not going to be drawing just these basic shapes, right? We're going to be drawing most of the time, you know, scenes and backgrounds and everything. So I wanted to do an entire background for this stream, right? Um, maybe not in color, but I would line it. Um, Hopefully, if I can get that done. And with the poll, let's see, hang on. I'm going to have to make a new file anyway, but... Let's make this six. There we go. That fits a little bit better. Right. So that's all that I'm going to do for all of the, you know, I don't want to overload y'all. Right. So that's all I'm going to do for the step-by-step -step for shapes. All right. If you can do a circle, then you can do a, it's almost the same as a pyramid, right? A cone, right? This time you would bring, you would draw the circle and then you'd bring it up from the center here and then just draw two lines connected to the edge of the circle. Not that hard. Right. If I was to just draw it over here. Right. I draw one line coming up, connects it to the edges. That would be a cone, right? Just like an extra step. So cones aren't that hard. Um, cylinders would be you draw two of these squares. Or you draw a box first, but you'd want this top one to be visible too. Then you'd make circles out of both of those sides and then bring them down and connect them, right? Cylinders very, very similar. But... I don't want to do all of those because if I do, then, you know, I won't have enough time to draw the background. So on the poll that we saw, on the poll that we posted, everyone voted for a marketplace. So I will be drawing a marketplace for the rest of the stream, right? Because I, I want to make sure that I have something finished <laughs> slightly finished slightly more finished right and i'll show you guys how to convert you know on while i work on a piece i'll show you guys how to convert you know just regular objects to 
actual scenes. What else I thought, what else I thought might be good is if I show you some of my past background work. <laughs> because, you know, I, I do do backgrounds a lot. Um, or I, I did them a lot for school. Let's see here. I guess this is technically two point. That's okay. Let's pretend it's one point. So, no, you know what? Let's do something that's a little more heavily one point. Yeah, right. So this one was all in one point perspective. We all had to just, I have a working file. Why didn't I just open that one? Yeah, right. So this is all one point perspective, right? It was a lot of boxes. It was a lot of um, rectangles and prisms and everything like that. Drawing people in perspective is kind of hard, but I will do that as well during this stream, right? But my, my horizon line you notice is directly across right here. Right, so this is my horizon line that went across, my vanishing point was right here, and everything receded back towards it. Right, I had a bunch of bookshelves, bookshelves made my life a lot easier. Right, so having that whole thing. No, don't save. Right, and this was the cleanup. Right, see, so you notice kind of how um, the lines also, when it's closer to you, um, the lines got a lot thicker, when it was farther away, the lines got a lot thinner. Right, that's your line art hierarchy, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. So let's instead get into drawing a marketplace. How do I want this to go? Because if I do, I like to do stuff on the spot, by the way, so I don't usually plan. Um, do I want to be looking above or do I want to be looking below? You know what? I kind of want to make everything look kind of big because I like that. Usually I like to have my horizon line and my vanishing point on another layer so it doesn't get lost. All right, I'll make my, you know what, let's make that a little bit higher. I can probably make that a little higher. Yeah. My vanishing point will be right here. So that's my horizon line and my vanishing point. Especially when it comes to, um, what's it called? Especially when it comes to drawing, you know, things in perspective, you have you might get very lost with um, <laughs> with your vanishing point lines, right? So you're going to have to keep track of those. Let me show you one that was really, really... really kind of intense, right? So your vanishing points can turn into something like this, <laughs> right? There's a ton, like a crazy ton, right, that you're going to have to keep track of because it's depending on how many boxes that you do. Right. I'll talk about this. This is two point technically. Um, I'll talk about um, Wow, I lost that thought. Anyway, um, but yes, I won't talk about um, two point stuff so much yet, but let's get going with this. So obviously when you think of marketplaces, right, you think of the stands, you think of all these other different objects that might show up. Um, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with um, drawing some, actually, you know, I'm going to start with the actual road. It's a very dynamic piece. Thank you. I'm going to start with the actual road, right? With all the market place things. The only reason I'm not really talking about too, like, um, too in depth with a lot of my other pieces is just because, you know, um, Like, there's a lot of concepts with two-point perspectives that don't really go along with one-point, because one-point is, like, the kind of basic one, right? Um, two-point is where it starts to get a little bit rougher, a little bit harder to do. I'm going to use a different color. Because there's a, a, a few other... Two-point is um, background artist's most common choice, I find. So let's say that that's our road, right? A road, quote unquote. It's actually a little bit off. Whoa! Forgot that I can't do that. There's no nudging, I don't think. No, there is not. Kind of want to change that key line if there is one. Right, what am I going to do? I'm going to find the.
farthest side of one of the sands. I can actually bring it like that. Right, so that's kind of how tall the stands will get. Just so I have a reference point across here as well. I can erase some of this as well over here. Right, you might lose track of whatever you're drawing if you don't kind of erase some of your vanishing point lines as well because you have the ability to, you know, get a little bit lost within your own artwork because those lines will stack up over time. They will get pretty crazy, especially when working in perspective. So here's where I'll, where I'll start to, you know, divide all of this up, right? As things recede back into the vanishing point, right, they'll get smaller. So as I get closer to me, right, the gaps between each stand get bigger and each stand gets quote unquote bigger as well. Hello, M. Welcome in. Haven't seen you in a while. We're doing perspective. We already did all the theory. Just dropped to say hi. Hello. Glad you could make it. Even if it's just for a little bit. We already did all the theory. So I'm getting onto the actual meat of the stream. I've examined less than six hours. Oh dear. Oh exams. I actually never had any when I was in college. <laughs> our, our program was all projects based. But that also made for a lot of stress. All right, so I'm kind of just dividing. I'm supposed to be sleeping. Oy. Right, so let me just divide up all of these stands really quick, right? I'm making these kind of look pretty big. Right, let's bring these back horizontally. Now you notice that it's only these sides that are going back towards the vanishing point, right? Everything else will stay perfectly horizontal and vertical, right? And I can erase some of these sides as well. Oh, I have an exam free life. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you for popping in. Next Friday I'll be there. All right. Right, so I'm bringing it back horizontally. If it was two point perspective, then I would have another vanishing point to bring these back to, but I don't. So, I want these to be vertical, or horizontal, sorry, and erase these vanishing point lines that are connecting them. Right, so they look more like separate objects. Do these always have to be the same exact size? No, and actually I recommend that they don't be, right? Um, you wanna add that little bit of variety in there. So I'm gonna change them up as time goes on. Right, but right now, just draw this like this. I'm busy, but just checking in to say it looks good so far, even I'm not quite sure what you're drawing right now. So yeah, and I'm gone. All right, bye. <laughs> Thanks for popping in and bye. Yeah, I didn't expect too many people to pop in. It is a 40 day long weekend, so I'm certain that other people are busy doing other things. Or relaxing or whatever. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So we've got
got all these kind of basic squares, right? I'm starting off with the basic squares so we can get into other things later. I'm also going to draw some tinier ones in the back here. That can cover up the vanishing point just a little bit. Right, so it's like there's another row of market things, market stands. Back here. Right, to give it a little bit more dimension. Let's say that I want to make one of these a little more diagonal. So what I'm going to do is choose a point. Draw that line diagonally. I'm also going to find my vanishing point. And draw it so it goes across so I know where to start that next one. Now I can erase these extra lines. This one will probably be farther back this way. Right, you notice how I'm trying to, I wouldn't normally erase all these lines. I'm just trying to make it as clean as possible so it's easier to follow what I'm doing. <laughs> because it can get a little bit tricky. All the extra details and whatnot are not going to be added until all these bases are in. Right, because right now I just want to get... all my stuff down. Let's make this a little bit shorter too, just for a variety. Especially in design, we want that variety, right? We don't want everything to look exactly the same. Let's make one of these curved. Let's make this one curved. So again, I'm going to draw my curved side, go back towards my vanishing point so I know where to start the other one. I'm actually going to bring back to the vanishing point one more time so I know where it can go towards as well. So remember, if anything follows the axis that will be going towards the vanishing point, that's the one that you have to make sure that you adjust, right? What I mean by that, all right, I'm going to give my really weird, my really weird explanation. Let's go back to this one. So think of... One of these things, right? These axis thingies, right? So if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, right? The one that goes forwards and backwards is the z-axis, right? That's the one that makes things three-dimensional, right? When you have a cube, let's pretend that this is a gorgeous cube, right? You have the, so let's make these different colors. It's always easier to explain with different colors. do that here too then. So Y is that color, X is green. Z is red, right? You have one point perspective. With one point perspective, all the ones that I have been showing you Z axis is you can choose actually it doesn't always have to be the Z axis. You can choose an axis to go back.
back. Actually, let's use a different word. Let's use recede, because I've already used that a bajillion times. Let's, to recede. Towards the vanishing point. So with one point perspective, you can choose one axis to recede towards the vanishing point. Give me a second. All right, so with one point, you can choose one axis to proceed towards the vanishing point. So right now, most likely, well, the Z axis. Hello? Oh. So with one point perspective, you can choose one axis to proceed towards the vanishing point, and it will most likely be the Z axis. So that's what I've been doing so far, right? Most things will be proceeding towards that z-axis. All right, so if anything is on that or close to that z-axis, that's what you want to bring back towards the vanishing point. Everything else could be perfectly straight. Perfectly straight up and down. All right, so let's add more of that variety back in. Let's continue with this section. Or this piece. So I don't want to be talking about axes forever. But we don't want the stands to just be these boxes, right? We're going to add some poles on them as well. The best thing about these poles is that most of the time they're not going to be, you know, in perspective. More likely than not, it will just be straight back and forth, except for a couple of spots. Actually, this would come down here. Yes, if that other spot is there, but that's causing a tangent. That's still. Oops. Going in that direction. Sorry, perspective is kind of hard to talk over because you're going to have to concentrate all the time. <laughs> Let's not do that then. Perspective is also a lot of back and forth. Sometimes you're going to go like, oh yeah, that works or that doesn't work. You're going to just have to undo and try again. because of how intense this perspective is at some points, it's going to get a little bit warped. Because there's a certain range that your perspective lines can be done in, right? Have I decided what kind of market it'll be? Honestly, not really sure. I'm kind of feeling like, you know, because like, I want the outdoor market, but like, you know, not sure what kind of outdoor market I'm feeling. For some reason, I'm I'm feeling like Canada's Wonderland vibes. You know what I mean? Like the. <laughs> 
I'm trying to make sense of this too. Sometimes it's easier just to sketch in your your poles as well instead of like, you know, constantly using a line tool or something. As for this one, there's a rectangle here, but I want to make it a tent, so I'm going to have to connect those. Drop the peaks. Alright, so it's a little more like a pyramid, but it isn't like a pyramid on the inside. farther back. That makes a little more sense. I'm starting to add on little details as well, which I should be bringing back here, but it's kind of accurate regardless. Even with your sketch, sometimes you don't even have in... When you do it enough, sometimes you don't even have your... Um, your perspective lines in like you'll have it very r loosely but you won't have like you know be constantly bringing it back with shift or whatever with that though that is the top of the hour so that is 503 so with that if you did not know um, to the few of you who are <laughs> who are in right now, um, if you did not know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. Um, I am one of the teachers. We have a few of the lovely teachers in the stream as well. So if you would like to, you know, check out our classes, what class offerings we have, you can check it out with the link in the description to our website. Um, and the files that you see before you, including, you know, this working file with all of the explanations and whatnot, plus this little background here. Both of those will be available on our Discord that you can download for free as JPEGs. Um, they are all yours. You can take them, keep them. Um, so it is all yours. But if you want access to my working file and all of my layers, you're going to have to sign up to my pa our Patreon um, where all my working files will be, plus the um, some sneak peeks from behind the scenes and critiques that critique days that you can join and discounts on our classes that have limited spots. So make sure that you take advantage of those before they are all gone. I love roller coasters, so I can't wait until the theme parks open again. I'm actually not a fan of roller coasters. <laughs> I've never been a huge fan of those like crazy big and people always are like, Jesse, you seem like this person who would like roller coasters. I'm like, I don't actually. Like you'd think so, but I don't. But for your sake, I hope they open up too. My dad and my brother like roller coasters, I think. Like, I like very few roller coasters, I find. Because I'm not a huge fan of the drops. This is more of an inside kind of thing, but it uh, doesn't make much sense. Now I'm going to draw it. So I'm trying to think of those like, maybe an umbrella would work a little bit better. So I don't. Ooga booga. I might just do a... Yeah, my approximation circle, which usually I get pretty right, so it's okay. <laughs> it's not perfect, but... Time to get some popcorn. Hello! Um, hello, Louis. Um, unrelated question, which file type do you prefer, JPEG or PNG? Depends on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm uploading to something like Instagram or, um, you know, like social media, I will be... 
um, using JPEGs just because I don't want full res on the internet. Um, but if it's like for a commission or something, I always save as PNGs because um, PNGs tend to hold a little more file data. JPEGs work perfectly fine most of the time as well, but um, PNGs tend to hold a little more file data and they tend to come out a little bit smoother. So that's tends to be what I do. What are we confused about? Me not liking roller coasters? <laughs> That's the point up, and I have done this incorrectly. Yes. Yeah, most people are shocked when they learn I don't like roller coasters. <laughs> Yeah, I'm scared of the drops, but they're always a thrill. Um, like, for me, it depends. Like, I like, if we're talking Canada's Wonderland, I liked um, the Vortex. I liked the, I didn't mind the Great Canadian Mind Buster. Um, I like the Fly. My dad hates that one. Um, I There's that one that I really like. It just goes fast. It's not like a drop or anything. It just goes fast. Um, that one I like. I like the speed aspect. I just don't like the drop aspect. Um, so the Leviathan's too large for me. Um, the behemoth is too large for me. I can never do the bat because I would never be able to go backwards. The, for those who aren't from Canada, these are a few of the rides that are at Canada's Wonderland. The bat is a roller coaster that goes up and then goes backwards. It reaches like a top point and then it just does the entire roller coaster again, but you're going backwards. I can never do that. Um, I've always preferred the speed aspect of roller coasters over the, um, like the drop aspect. I have friends who love roller coasters. I'm like, I could never. My best friend loves roller coasters. And like, she would always, she goes on them and I'm the, the designated bag carrier. A lot of this is me figuring out how these shapes are going to work, right? This is the sketching phase, so it is going to be a lot of figuring stuff out as well. You know, figuring out how things are going to flow, how this perspective is going to work, yada, yada, yada. Number one principle you always want to keep in mind is that when it comes closer towards you, it'll get bigger, right? If it's farther away, it'll remain pretty small, right? So you want to kind of think of that. Hmm, maybe I should make this one ink a little too. This is a bit of a rough angle to work with because of how like close it is. But I do like me a challenge, so I can't complain that much. <laughs> Just 
so usually when I give myself these challenges, it's like, this isn't a bunch of people watching me. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. I usually do this in classes, too. Um, the classes that I teach. I bet my students think I'm a masochist by this point. Because of how much crap I like to put myself through. <laughs> when it comes to art. And sometimes it's faster just to do it freehand instead of using any of the tools. We had a company trip in 2016. We went to Wonderland. Oh, did you? Yeah, no. Obviously, I wasn't there. Um, but we used to go on trips with um, our church. Our local church all the time that I would volunteer at. And it was like... We would go to Wonderland for trips and whatnot. Those were always fun. As much as I like, don't really miss um, actual roller coasters and stuff, I miss the aspect of being able to go out and see other people. So <laughs> that's what I miss. This is kind of becoming like a theme park marketplace, kind of. Adding on extra bits just for a little bit more personality. So we can say those are lights or something. Do I ever get art block? Um, I'm uncertain, honestly. Like, I have, like... I am never used to. I used to be able to just, like, pull out a pen and I'd draw immediately. I feel like that ability has been a little bit more lost as time has gone on. Like, I can pick up a pen. If you tell me to draw anything, I can pick up a pen easily. But, like, I find that, like, my my immediate ideas run out kind of fast. I Like, I if to get, like, that intense sense of inspiration, it ha that hasn't come back in a really long time. Like, I have to kind of force it. I know how to force it, but, like, I don't do it all the, all the time. Um, but 90% of the time, if I have to, like, pick up a pen and start working and I already know what I need to do, I can do it. It's just, like... It might not be as fantastic as if I had like that intense sense of <laughs> that intense sense of inspiration. I get motivational blocks more so, where it's like I don't feel like working, um, but like ninety nine percent of the time, it's like yeah, I can do it if you ask me to. Here's where we start to add in more of the embellishments, right? Um, I've already started, um, but this is where I'm going to create a new layer. Again. And this is where all the cosmetic stuff starts to happen. Right? So it's a little bit less of the hard perspective and now more of the actual cosmetic bits. Um, and this is where, you know, we'll start to transfer, add in a little more details, you know, transfer some of that knowledge from the perspective that we've been given. We'll also start to add in more. More. <laughs> right? Trims and designs and everything like that, right? Make it feel a little bit more natural. Right? Because even if these things are, like, man-made, you know, there's still, like, some things that you might want to add on. And most of the time I can just kind of approximate where things will go. So this is where it goes from hard perspective to learning design, right? Sometimes, you know, you're going to have to, most of the time, you're going to have to look up references and stuff, right? Um, what does a market look like? What are different stands look like? What's some colors that you could use, right? I'm probably not going to color this in um, because I want to finish most of this in stream. I 
idea what the lights. Thank you. That the little the little band is up at top. What's this stand gonna be? I was actually talking about fish with my. Oh no, this one's probably gonna be for fish. Oh. Hmm. I'll say this is like a jewelry stand. I'm gonna draw a little bit of a bust here. Actually, that wouldn't be facing down, it'd be facing upwards, like that. There we go. Because that's curved that way. Oh, here's an easy trick to know whether something should be curving down or curving up, right? If it is above the horizon line, it needs to curve upwards. If it's below the horizon line, it needs to curve downwards, right? Because in this case, we're looking upwards. So if we had a pipe, right? If I drew a pipe real quick, right? It'd be curving upwards because it's above the horizon line. And slowly, as we get closer and farther away, like that, the curve will change, right? So when you're above the horizon line, you want it to curve upwards. When you're below it, you want it to curve downwards. And it gets more intense the farther away from the horizon line you go. Right, that's an easy way to think about it. Right, so these curves are going upwards. This is like a necklace that's going to be curving upwards, right? So keep that in mind if you're ever drawing stuff in perspective. Some people forget that and it ends up looking a little bit wonky. A few more here. Yeah, so Marketplace won the poll. Another one I've been... I was quite, I, I quite like drawing marketplaces, so I'm okay with this. Um, another one I would have been really, really excited to draw was the, um, the alleyway. We might have to save that one for two point then, if y'all vote for it. Right, so this one's across. This is going to be more of a fish tent, so I'm going to... Keep it a little more like that. A little bit more bland with the actual tent portion. So this is going to be more of a cooler up here. With doors that you can open in the back. Of course, don't approximate. So sometimes I've met a few people who, you know, um, I think I've already said this before, but like, you know, some people who like to skip steps, right? When learning things. Also turn off your perspective line sometimes. It might help a little bit with viewing what you're doing. Um, but I, I've known a few people who like to skip steps when it comes to learning stuff. And like they try to skip ahead and they're like, oh man, it's like, I, I got it. I can do it on my own. Um, but sometimes when you skip ahead with you know, learning your basics and whatever, you know, the shapes and whatever, um, your work ends up turning out worse than if you had just stuck with learning the basic first, the basics first, and then going on to the more advanced stuff, right? Don't try to rush when learning, right? Some people are just faster learners, but if you try to rush without completely understanding where, what the basics are, then there's a chance that, you know, your work will end up looking, like, not great. Right, especially with like drawing anatomy and stuff like that, right? You have like some people who don't want to have to deal with, you know, drawing all the shapes first and knowing the measurements and everything like that. But unfortunately, that's what you got to know before you get to the more advanced stuff because you could be st skipping steps and it'll end up making your work look a lot worse than if you had gone along with them. Let's draw a little fish up here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretend it looks great. One trick with digital that I don't do traditionally, obviously, because I can't. Um, is 
means you can draw your designs off to the side. If you need it to be skewed, right, with perspective, you can draw your designs off to the side. All right, so let's say I had this fish here. Select it with your lasso, control T. You can skew it a little bit. So it can match the perspective. You can only do that digitally, obviously, but um, when you hit control T, you can hold control on all the anchors. And pull and push them around. Oh, I should have done one of those open stands. I'm going to do that. All right, so this is kind of like a county fair, fair market now. I was thinking of that fish market thing, but this is a little bit more fun. <laughs> Right, where they kind of just have tons of random stuff everywhere. It's like, what can you buy? You can buy everything here. Like, if you've ever been to the X or Canada's Wonder, like the ah, Canada's Wonderland, kind of um, the expos or whatever. Yeah, kind of like that. Or Markham Fair. That's very niche, though. <laughs> You have to be in, like... Okay. I hope nothing cut out too much because OBS just disconnected itself. Okay. Hopefully we're still good. Alright. <laughs> I'm sure someone will text me if I have disconnected. Right, sometimes it's a little bit easier to just turn off your perspective when you're working on certain areas, right? Where it's not too, too perspective heavy, but you need to know what the area looks like. All right, so I need this area because I need to draw a shelf. And it's mostly just, or you know what? Let's make this a clothing rack. Hats. Yeah. You notice how I'm not, especially with this sketching portion, you notice how I'm not zooming in at all, right? I'm keeping it very, very zoomed out, and that's because I don't want anything too crazy to get in my way. Or I don't want to focus too hard on anything. Because if I do, then I'll get distracted, and that's not what I want. Right? I want to make sure... that a sketch remains as a sketch. These are shoes. Let's pretend these are beautiful shoes. Yes, these are all like clothes and whatever. I'm a very linear artist. I tend to do stuff very, very procedurally. <laughs> so it's like, if I have one section, then I'll move on to the next one afterwards. Yeah, these ads always have like, I, was, I said this is a jewelry place, right? Something like that. Kind of not great illustrations. I think it'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's this last one. Let's make this into a, a clear case. Do something off to the side for a second. All right. So this is a little more like a display case. What are they displaying? Oh, maybe we could have like one of those like people. You know that every vendor does like a like um. Like a collectibles cart, usually for like nerds. Nerdy collectibles cart. Maybe those like games or whatever. Let's do that. Again, not spending too much time on it. Ah, oh, heavens. Sorry, I keep sneezing. It's a little dusty. What controller is this? Uh, none, because they need to keep that copyright. Yeah, it's kind of boot like places. <laughs> Here's just the edge of something. Usually, this is kind of more in the foreground, these little edged ones. They don't add too much in terms of detail, it's just they add a nice kind of border when you have something kind of thick in the foreground. Is gonna be ice cream. Cause you know how like every ice cream thing has like the curved window. Alright, so this little ice cream vendor. Have the umbrella up here, more circles. You notice how though I'm using all of the shapes that I've put down to create you know these other shapes that are surrounding, right? Because there's a little bit of extra shapes when it comes to creating actual objects. There's a few extra shapes when it comes to creating objects, but I'm using my original oops, I'm using my original, you know, boxes and squares and whatever to create these new shapes or as guidelines, right? That's what it looks like without the horizon line, by the way. You can kind of see what's happening here. Oh, that's the mark for the last half hour. So 
If you did not know, for those of you who have either just joined or are kind of popping in, if you did not know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. So if you would like to check out all the classes that are available, I am one of the teachers. I don't know if Faye is still in, but she is one of the lovely teachers as well. And Alyssa, who is behind the Wing Canvas channel right now, she is one of the lovely teachers as well. So if you would like to check out the classes that we have available, please do uh, with the link in the description. Um to wingcanvas.com and the file that I'm working on right now this one and this other one with all the explanations on it that will be available for download on our discord which you can join with a link in the description as well um it's yours you can keep it it will be a jpeg that you can download and reference whenever you would like but please do note that if you would like my um working files you're going to have to join our patreon which is where you can get all my working files you can get perks um such as sneak peeks into what we are creating um and critique days that we hold on our discord and of course um discounts on our classes which are in limited amounts so Make sure that you grab one of those spots before they are gone. So let's get back to drawing this market. Um, so that marks, that means that there's about a half hour left um, of this stream. I was hoping to get to the liner, but I might not be able to. Very worst, I'll do like very, very messy cleanup. <laughs> That's kind of ironic. Let's do some kind of messy cleanup. I'll say this is plushies. Let's say this is pillows and plushies and whatever. I don't know if this is the same for, like, every fair. If you're, like, not from Canada or from, like, this general area, I swear, like, every every fair that I go to, there's always that one vendor that's selling alpaca for, like, alpaca-made stuff. Like, it's always, like, scarves, plushies. Scarves, plushies, um, gloves, stuff like that. It's always alpacas, though, with alpaca fuzz because it's, like, really, really soft and warm, which it is. I remember going to one of those alpaca vendors and like um I got a plushie from there. It was a really really soft plushie of the alpaca because it was made with alpaca fur and it was really really sweet. I still have it. I named it Fluffy because <laughs> I'm incredibly creative. I am constantly making sure, constantly making sure with these, um, each stand, I want to have something different on it, right? Even if they do have overarching themes or something. I just always want to make sure that there's something just slightly different with each one. Whether it be a pattern. Or the tent style or something. This one will be a tank. Let's pick this actual fish. You ever been to those fairs where they have goldfish as pets? I love those because it's like, they're like, oh, I'm taking home a goldfish. Most of the time it's like feeder fish. <laughs> you can get it for like 20 cents at a pet store. I do feel kind of bad though. It's kind of like they're being pawned off. OK, 
Okay. So I can get rid of that horizon line a little bit. Here's the thing when doing backgrounds with perspectives as well, right? It's like... It's like, yeah, you want to be as accurate as possible, but, like, sometimes, like, an approximation works just fine. But that approximation is hard to get right. Because especially if you haven't been doing perspective for a very long time. So don't approximate if you don't know what you're doing. If you're doing it for long enough, then yeah, go for it. Because eventually you kind of get an eye for it. Not saying that my eye is perfect, but I can kind of approximate. I'm still learning a lot with perspective. You notice how as it gets farther away I make these little triangles a little bit smaller. Okay, just to fill in the space here because it's a little bit empty. Right, so you can kind of fill in the spaces here. I want to add them some stones. Which I'll fix the shapes of afterwards. Just want to get them in here. And just give it a little bit of extra perspective. And now I can do my quote unquote cleanup layer, which is when I can clean up all that I've already drawn. Just to make it a little bit clearer. If you didn't know, when it comes to pre-production, right, there's a lot of different levels of pre-production. What I mean by pre-production pre is, you know, backgrounds and whatever. Um, like concept art and all that, there's a few levels, different types of pre-production artists, right? You have like the concept artists, but then there's also, you know, your background artists, but there's, it's not just one person doing all the backgrounds, right? Most of the time you have a few people doing it and the people who do the line art and like, you know, all the, the people who finish up the piece, those are called your cleanup artists. So all the line artists are actually called cleanup artists. I think, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I was told, anyway. And again, you notice how I've just completely discarded the use of the line tool completely for this section, right? Mainly just because that's that's more for more aesthetic purposes though. It's because I find that if you if you rely on the line tool too much, especially in this kind of cleanup phase, that it ends up looking a little bit stiff. It's just me as a screen going nuts. Other people are gonna have to let you know about that because it looks fine to me. <laughs> I don't know if I did this correctly, I don't think I did. Yeah, because I find that free handing tends to look a little bit nicer than um working with a line tool. The same goes for traditional, right? I might use a ruler in the beginning, but then over time I'll just discard it and work freehand. But 
but always make sure that you're comfortable enough doing that first. So I'm not making it ultra clean, just so I don't spend forever on it, but making it clean enough so I can kind of, everything looks fine on your end, all right. Just clean enough so it's easier to decipher what's happening. It's like, could I make this Extra clean, yes, but we would be here for hours and hours because as much as I love backgrounds and as speedy as I can be, backgrounds are one of those things that I, I cannot be fast with. <laughs> Just not built for backgrounds. I have to force myself into it most of the time. Even if they, I do enjoy them. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I quite like fashion. Oh, sorry, not fashion, uh, backgrounds. But I like fashion, too. <laughs> you notice how some areas I'm making the lines a little bit thicker. Others I'm making them a little bit thinner. So one point perspective is considered the easiest perspective, as in like, you know, it doesn't have quite so many things to worry about, right? It's just one point that everything recedes back towards, right? And one point can be done a lot of different ways, right? It isn't just the singular way that I showed today. Um, I've done one point in a few ways where, you know, it was the y-axis that was in perspective, right? If you remember back to, I'm going to turn up my correction because this is going to annoy me if I don't. Um, if we refer back to, you know, the axes that I talked about, right? The one point perspective. Um, I've done it where the, all the axes, I've chosen different axes other than the Z axis to do in perspective, right? In this case, I've chosen just to keep it Z to make it as, you know, easy as possible. And why I'm making some of the lines thicker and some of the lines thinner is because I want to make sure that, you know, there's a line hierarchy. I think I said that I wasn't going to mention it, but I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to mention it anyway. Because um, sometimes, you know, you know, there's different, you don't want to make every single line most of the time, you don't want to make every single line completely the same thickness, um, especially with backgrounds, right? Um, because it can make everything kind of meld together. It'd be very hard to distinguish. Right? So especially with backgrounds, you want to have that 
kind of hierarchy where some lines are very thin, some lines are very thick, so you can tell what's in the foreground, what's in the middle ground, what's in the background. Some people um, kind of get rid of that um, need for line weighting with line color, right? So some people color in their lines. I don't do that quite so much. I like to keep just a bold black line, even though I've also been told don't line in black. Um, oh well. But um, if it's a black and white piece, that doesn't matter, I guess. But yeah, so when you're working with backgrounds, you know, whatever is closer to the foreground, whatever is a silhouette, stuff like that, those tend to be the ones that you want to keep thicker. Your details, you want to be a little bit thinner, stuff like that. So this is the one where it's like you can walk in. I love booths like those, but I always feel bad walking out when I don't buy anything. Because sometimes I walk in and I'm like, eh, I'm not interested. And then I just leave, but I feel bad. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Too nice. These lines aren't ultra, ultra clean. This also needs to be a little thicker, I think. I turned up my correction really high, so it's like kind of hard to maneuver sometimes. I don't know if I've mentioned this in other streams as well, but remember that when you are doing your lines, right, you're not really tracing what's below there, you're correcting it, right? Your line art is meant to clean up what's below there. That's why, like, cleanup artists or line artists are, that's why line artists are called cleanup artists, because <laughs> it's they're not really line arting, they're cleaning up what's already there, right? So it's like, your line art shouldn't be a direct copy. It should be a, you know, more of a cleanup comparison. And for the sake of time, I'm not really using references, but I really should be. Especially for some of these areas. Like a clothes hanger. I don't even know if I got that right. Oh well. <laughs> Isn't correction helpful? It is, but I find that it makes me work a lot slower when I turn it on. Which is why I don't usually leave it on, especially with Medibang, because Medibang's correction is very, very strong. So it's like I tend to leave it off. But it is helpful if you want something smoother. It also affects both the eraser and the pen, so it's like, I'm like, eh. <laughs> Which is really annoying, because I don't, I never want my correction to affect my eraser most of the time. 
I'm like, okay, just don't touch my eraser. My cousin wants to say hi to you because he's a big fan. Thank you. Whew. Well, hello to your cousin then. <laughs> joke <laughs> all right it's 552 okay i'll get as much of this done as i can hopefully i'll be able to get it all done because i'm almost done here all right correction is gonna have to go off then because if i want to move faster i'm gonna have to ignore it Yes, thank you for being a fan of the channel. It is fun to stream. I do quite like doing it. I feel a little bit off my game today, but... Oh, it's real fish or dessert toy fish? They're cute. Oh, I forgot the sign. Um, It's up to your interpretation. <laughs> Maybe they're real fish. I just don't have the time to render out proper fish. <laughs> we can pretend that this all looks good. Duck lips. Have you never seen a catfish? <laughs> they all look like that. Catfish are koi. They got them fat lips. Clothes. Let's pretend that looks good. This is why I'm like, I don't want to zoom in too much. Because if I do, then I get too caught up in certain parts. Yeah, and let's pretend that that's a game console thing. You know what really helps your art that not a lot of people talk about? Learn how to draw in a bunch of different fonts. I mean that. Like, if you want, if you want to do like a bunch of like fake design or whatever, learn to draw a bunch of different fonts. I I spend a lot of my my young years, oh my god, a lot of my my younger years typing. So I had a lot of fonts memorized because I would just constantly use them all the time. And I found it fun to try to imitate fonts. To this day, I can still do. All right, I'm gonna have to do this because I can't be bothered. Um. To this day, I can still do a pretty good, um, and like a digital clock. I can illustrate a digital clock some um, numbers pretty well. But trust me when I say that, like using, like learning how to do a bunch of different fonts for, for illustrations, it makes your life a lot easier because you don't have to type out everything. And when you type out stuff, it tends to look a little bit too mechanical as well. So it's like it ends up looking a little bit nicer if you just write it. It feels a little bit more natural, I think. Yes, these lines aren't very clean. Uh, it's annoying me, but I don't want to spend forever on this either. It was a good idea to give myself as much time as possible <laughs> with the background.
looks a little sus. All right, hang on. <laughs> All right, let's do my other. I'm usually very meticulous with fonts. That's why this pains me just a little bit. But, um, oops. Oh, free transformer is still turned on. Yeah, sometimes doing a, a few digital art tricks, knowing some simple tricks, make your work go by a lot faster. Like, can, should you know how to do it without it? Yes, but like sometimes, like you gotta work fast. It's good to know these tricks. Kind of like um, matte painting is one way. Matte painting is a really quick way to draw quote-unquote draw it's mostly just like photo bashing it's kind of what matte painting is it's not painting at all um most of the time anyway or it's like you know you're painting over top of like images that you've sourced i've never been much of a matte painter i'd rather actually paint it all <laughs> They kind of look like ta cause art dolls. Okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be plushies and plushies and pillows. Yeah, I'm a little quiet this stream. I don't know, man. I guess I'm focusing. <laughs> We're almost done here. I'm almost done with this. We're just a little bit over time, 6 so something. We're probably finished by around 6 of 5 or something. Yeah, those are the actual pet fish. Oh, not even. We'll finish pretty soon. I've also noticed that I don't really like those rocks, so I am not going to include them again. 
Don't be afraid to change your initial sketch. Sometimes you'll notice that you don't like certain things. And it's okay to get rid of them. Oops. few little triangles left. How would I go about putting people in here? Ah, so drawing people in perspective is a whole other concept. Um, if I was to add people, I was going to add people, but like I were going a little bit over time. Um, I'll add in like if I'll add in a little sketch if there was to write a person here. I wanted to go over people more so in two point perspective, but we'll talk about this too because I wanted to do all the shapes mostly in one point, and then we could talk about people in two point. Um, but if I was to add a person, it all depends on where I put them with the horizon line, right? So if my horizon line is here, let's turn this down. With my horizon line being here. Right, say if I had like a person at full height, like right here, the next person that I would draw, actually he's a little bit close up, be like here-ish, yeah. If I had a person here, right, I would have to notice, his arms are a little bit short, I would have to notice where the horizon line kind of lines up on the body, right? So it kind of lines up with this pelvis area. So the next person, I would have to draw larger, obviously, but it would also have to line up with their, with their pelvis. You could also, another way you could do it is like, figure out where the top of the head is, draw a horizon line that way. Right, same deal back here. Yeah, this makes a little more sense. So usually you would just kind of find a point. Right, kind of find the top of the head, find the bottom of the head. And the height would be skewed based on that. Of course, they would all have to be, have to be kind of like the same height in order for that to work. But say if you had a smaller child here. Right, same deal if you had somebody else who's that height. But you'll kind of notice that their necks kind of line up in the same place too anyway. And kind of the shoulders kind of line up in the same area. All with the horizon line, right? Kind of the pelvis area with these first two people. Um, but you know, top of the head, bottom of the foot, find the vanishing point, go up and down, right? And there's a lot more nuance with like, you know, the because the body, you know, is technically a bunch of forms, right? So you can have, like, a bunch of cylinders here, and you'd have to draw the... You don't... Like, that's so, so meticulous. Drawing the entire body in, like, perfectly... Um, what's it called? Perfectly perspective... Perfect perspective um, forms, right? That's a little bit excessive, I think. So you don't have to do that, but it certainly helps if you have some intense perspective. 
Um, but I don't really want to add in people. Um, we can just kind of leave it at this. Let's pretend this is kind of abandoned. Maybe it's before hours. Um, but with that, though, guys, that is 6.07, so we're a little bit over time. Um, but with that... Um, thanks so much for joining again if you were not here throughout the midway. Um, remember that we are not only a YouTube channel, we are also an art school. So if you would like to check out um, all of our classes that we are offering, I am one of the teachers. Um, Lovely Faye, um, who is still in the chat, I've noticed, um, is also one of the teachers and also our creative director. And Alyssa, who is behind the Wing Canvas chat right now. Um, is also one of our lovely instructors. So be sure to check out our classes in the description if you would like to see um, or sign up for one of them. Um, and these two files that you see in front of you, this explanation one and this entire background um, will be available as JPEGs on our Patreon. So be, or not Patreon, sorry, our Discord. <laughs> um, so be sure to check those out later on. Um, if you join our Discord, you can download them, save them, do whatever you want, just don't repost them. Um, and you can refer back to them as much as you would like. But if you would like my working files with all of the layers, you are going to have to join our Patreon. So be sure to check that out um, for all of my working files, along with discounts to our classes and sneak peeks critiques and um other things other fun perks discounts yes i said discounts already um but yes thanks so much for joining everyone um if you stuck it out through the whole thing thank you because <laughs> perspective can be a little bit tedious um but yeah we'll come back with two point next week um thanks y'all so much and i'll see you next week Bye bye